27th, 2015, and the release uh, this week was Step 3 of the Melisma course. I'm expanding the range a little bit in your ear training, uh, but all in the name of starting to vocalize to melismas and to also tune up to drone tones. And I put that all together for a major scale and uh, diatonically moving and also in thirds and then the chromatic scale all happening uh, consecutively on this particular exercise. This is a really good exercise. I have a lot of students who come to me and uh, one of their big problems and fears is that they can't keep it in tune. They can't sing in tune. They, they got notes, they've got ideas, but they just can't keep them in tune. And I'm telling you that one of the ways to really get it going in relationship to tune, yes, you need an ear, but how do you develop that ear? You have to take that ear and tune up to the tonal center. A great musician, a Mozart ear, I like to call it, doesn't just hear the sound of the scale patterns or the sound of a major chord or a minor chord. Yes, you have to be able to do that, but even after you can do that, it doesn't mean that you can sing those things in tune. And for that fact, any melody line in the world doesn't, you could sing the melody line, know the song, sing the whole melody line, but not sing the melody line in tune. I have met, uh, I've had students who have perfect pitch and they can't sing in tune when they first start with me. And what is the reason why? The reason is because you're not tuning up to the tonal center, back to the drones. That's why it's so important that you have this reference tone that you're always singing to then you tune up to it. That's what every great musician does. doesn't matter if they're uh, instrumentalist or a vocalist, they're tuning up to the sound of the chords and they sing right in the pocket, right where it belongs. And how do you develop that skill? Well, I think one of the ways is to do what I'm telling you, develop exercises with drums. Now on the musical tip of the week, and you can see that I'm standing, last uh, musical tip, I talked about breathing. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about breathing review a little bit last week's lesson about breathing or tip of the week and then give you a little tip here about how to get a few more notes when you think you're running out of breath with a breathing technique. It's a good little tip. So first of all, all the time when it comes to breathing, we've been doing it since we were born. It's not that hard of a thing to do. You have to put your body in good alignment. I always say the shoulders are like a coat hanger and it just hangs in the closet. It doesn't pull up or anything. It just stays relaxed. Your torso is like a water barrel and the water is the air. When you turn on a faucet, put the water down to the bottom of a barrel or a glass, the water goes down to the bottom of the glass, fills up from the bottom to the top, not from the top to the bottom. Yet people breathe that way. so. They'll go like this and just put air in the chest and that's going to create tension and you're not even going to get enough air and you're going to run out of air and you're not going to get a good phrase going. So you want to just simply take a breath, put your hands on your lower back here because you can feel more of your lung action that way. Take a breath. Feel an expansion in the back and don't belly breathe and just lock here. Allow that air after you take that low breath to continue on up into the chest, which causes the ribs to separate a little bit, the intercostals to separate, meaning you're getting a little bit of expansion. Now you don't overfill yourself full of air because that creates tension in itself too. Because the whole idea of breathing well is not that you have tons of air that you're pushing against your vocal cords. I'm always talking about the fact that too much heft and air pressure pushing under the cords causes a problem, which is why lots of times in the beginning I don't spend too much time talking about breathing the way I am right here because sometimes people misinterpret it and they put too much heft underneath the vocal cord. But if you don't put too much heft underneath the vocal cord, you take a good breath, you allow the air to fill from what feels like the bottom on up to the top, get a slight expansion in the lungs here. I always like to say it's the feeling of like taking a wonderful breath in a mountain air or at the beach when that air is just beautiful and smells so great. And you take a good breath and that's good body alignment. And now if you're standing up straight, head, neck, torso in a straight line, you take that breath and you're standing up straight, there is a natural firmness here because 
Again, you're going to hear from vocal instructors and choir directors that there's supposed to be some kind of firmness here. Uh, but you don't need to create that firmness. Your posture will create that firmness. So if you're standing up straight, you take that good breath, you have a natural firmness here, you don't have to much think about it. So what's the tip? That's basically last lesson I was talking about that, or last vocal tip last week. Once you have this breath and you're expanding the, the air, uh, and letting the air come out smoothly and nice, you're going to get to a point finally where you start to run out of air. And at that point with this expansion, if you will completely relax and allow your stomach or abdominals to relax, to disengage, you're going to get about another three seconds worth of air. Now, you don't want them to disengage until you're close to the end of your breath. And if I, I would waste too much time here if I really sang a note as long as I can on one breath. So I'm just going to hold this for a little while and then I'm going to disengage my abdominals and allow the air to slowly come in here. And when you do that, again, you get a little bit more air. So if I go, oh, that's what happens. That I, I let the sound really change, first, be, first of all, because I disengaged my abdominals and the resonance went away, which talks about the difference between support and non-support. So any of you teachers out there watching this, I know I did that. But I'm talking about at the very end where, they're going, where the student is going to run out of breath. If you disengage and, and pull the air in for a little while, there's some more reserved air in the lungs and you can get ah, another three seconds or so worth of air, air, maybe even five. So one more time. Oh. time I kept the resonance in, notice, but I still pull the abdominal muscles in to get that extra air. That's the musical tip of the week. It's a short one, I know, I'm not talking too long, but it's simply that, and all you have to do is take a vowel sound, sing in a comfortable, anywhere comfortable in your range, so whatever is comfortable for your voice, not too high, not too low at first, just find a nice note, sustain it, on any vowel sound, oo, o, a, e, a, a, any of the sounds, keep your body alignments straight, sing that long tone, hold it as long as you can, and when you feel like you're starting to run out of air, then release and pull in and see if you can get another three or four seconds. Great little trick. So there it is for everybody on totallyvocals.com. Now if you're on YouTube watching this, I hope you enjoyed the musical tip as well. And like always, I invite those of you who are not signed up on the, on the site to come on over, sign up for the free membership. Signing up for the free membership gets you a whole free beginning voice course. Ten lessons all laid out. And uh, I'm not just trying, I didn't try to just hurry up and do something that you didn't pay for. It's great information. It's the way to start. So that's a great start for everybody. And uh, even singers who have a little bit of experience are going to find some interesting things in that beginning course to help you out. Now, besides that, on the site, we have hundreds of songs and breakdowns of both male and female singers. I take the songs, I take the singers, I have them sing these wonderful songs. I, then I take the songs and explain to you what they're doing what parts of their voice are they're in, how they're pronouncing things, how their breathing and their phrasing is working, all of these things with breakdowns of songs. A beginning, intermediate, and advanced voice course, a course that teaches vibrato, an ear training course that will really help you develop that pitch in your ear, a uh, jazz scat singing course, and a harmony singing course, and a melisma course 
Now the Melisma course, again, is a, a course that teaches people how to sing various licks and lines and embellishments on single words and vowel sounds. What R&B singers do all the time, jazz singers do it. Sarah Vaughan, if anybody knows who Sarah Vaughan is, Sarah Vaughan used melismas constantly. Aretha Franklin uses them. Christine Aguilera uses them. Stevie Wonder uses them. One Direction uses them. Usher uses them. The melismas are simply licks and lines and how you develop them and how you hear them around the chords and the scales that you're vocalizing to. So that and so much more and a total commitment always to put the best foot forward and show you guys how to really sing what it takes to really do it right. So totallyvocals.com.